you don't want to be mean. You don't want to see like people get hurt, you know, but at the same time, it's like, I think if she could, you know, cut me open or whatever, you know, she will, you know, so. What up, everyone? Shaquille Mahjoudi here for CBS Sports. And you know who this is. She is the UFC's fifth-ranked women's strawweight contender back in the main event opposite Yan Xiaonan at UFC Vegas 61 yep. on Saturday, October 1st. Man, there's too many of these Vegas cards. I can't keep track. Mackenzie Duran, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm just excited for my fight next week. So, yeah, training hard. Uh, it's going to be a big... Um, a big challenge you know it's another top ranked girl um so yeah it's good i'm excited you know uh if, if it wasn't obvious by like the one million instagram followers mackenzie doing very media savvy i gotta say i appreciate that you're seated we've got a full <laughs> screen a nice background i can't tell you how many times i do one of these and the fighters are like in their car going through a tunnel to and from <laughs> training camp so so thank you for going the extra mile today Oh no. Okay. No no, I'm just I'm just getting my my daily sun, you know, in between trainings I come out and I just I'm in the backyard. I'm like, oh I have my interviews. So um yeah, it's just my backyard. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, get some fresh air there. Um uh, before we get to uh the fight you had against Tisha Torres, the fight we have coming up against Jan, uh I do I did notice that you were in attendance for the twenty twenty two ADCC World Championships. Um man. Talk of the town right now, Gordon Ryan. If you were to, you know, let's say 10, 15 years from now, your daughter Moa says, Mommy, who's Gordon Ryan? How would you describe Gordon Ryan? Um, I mean, Gordon, he's someone I've, I've inter I interviewed him because I did some commentating when I was back in my jiu jitsu days, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I interviewed him back in the day when I was still in jiu jitsu. So we're talking like 2015, you know? And Back then, I mean, he definitely, he changed, you know, he's evolved so much, um, just been more like athletic, you know, just put on muscle and really it's kind of just grown into what, who he is now, you know? So, I mean, he, he's tough and he's tough. He's been involving so much, you know, taking it professional and just kind of taking jujitsu, um, I think on a different, a different path, you know, it's a little bit different, like the media wise, his style and everything like that. But it's good. I mean, I think I think we need all those types of people. You know, we need the people who are like jiu-jitsu is very martial artist. You know, it's not like MMA where we can have like, you know, a Conor McGregor who can talk crap, you know, or something like that, you know, because we fight each other all the time. But the truth is, is that it's hard to find someone to give him, you know, a real run for his money. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, he's definitely bringing like just this media to jiu-jitsu. It's good for a sport, you know, it's good. I don't think we... We can all be like that, you know, because he definitely talks, you know, he talks a lot. But, you know, I mean, he, how do you say, like, he walks the talk. Yeah, so it's like, you know, he, he's definitely doing a lot for the sport. And, yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't know if you know, but, like, we had, like, Harjo Gracie, who's in the Gracie family, you know, he just, he's like a blanket, you know, like, he'll just get on you and he can just start, just start, you know, taking over you. And you're just like, ah, you know, and he, he definitely has kind of, like, that style but um with the new with like leg locks and things like that you know so it's definitely a hard person to fight and he's doing a lot uh if this can you know he he said like i don't mind putting out instructional videos because i'm so far ahead of all these guys do you think he's on track to being the greatest of all time grappling space or are we still is there still work to be done in that no no i mean i think i mean i haven't really seen him too much like you know with the gi, I don't think I've ever seen him with the mm. gi, you know. Um, so I mean, no gi is definitely it's a, it's different, you know. No gi. Most of the guys that do good, like at the ADCC, they come from the jujitsu jiu background, you know. They compete in jujitsu. So I mean, if you look at almost all the all the category champions, they all probably won the world championships in IBJJF with the gi, you know. So um, no gi is a little bit different. I think the level can be kind of equalized a little bit more without the gi than it is in the gi i think in the gi the level is, is different but yeah i mean I, I, he definitely he definitely has a i think a ways to come <laughs> to, if he wants to be like you know the greatest of all time you know what i mean but no he's he's doing good you know i think he'll stay focused as long as he doesn't like you know go and party too much <laughs>
<laughs> it's 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 very apropos that you mentioned that. I got some parting questions for you, but we'll leave it on the latter half of the interview. Uh, let's talk a little bit about you, of course. We got this main event spot coming up against Yan Xiaonan. Um, you know, a lot of knockouts on her resume. Mackenzie Dern, obviously, a submission. Savant. When you look at the actual sort of dynamics of the fight, what's going to be the biggest challenge when it comes to sort of neutralizing and then overcoming Yan Xiaonan? Um, I think the biggest challenge will just be kind of like to not get overwhelmed. You know, from what I've seen, she has high volume, you know, in her punch. She, she has good technique, you know, so it's like, you know, she hits on the right spot. You know, it's not like a whole bunch of punches, but just kind of like hooks and things like that. No, she hits clean. And it's like it's those punches that can, you know, wobble you. And even if you see them coming, but when it's like five, six, seven punches, it can be overwhelming, you know. So um, I think the most important is just to not get overwhelmed, you know, and be comfortable, see everything. Um, and then, of course, closing the distance, you know, I think that's always the hard part for, you know, grapplers, at least like me, that doesn't have a Carlos yes. Barza wrestling, you know. But um, I mean. I fought Tisha and I fought Marina, and if you, I think that Young Young Shonan doesn't move as much as they do. I feel like they kind of they move a lot, you know. And I think she likes to stay more in the pocket, you know. She'll get in and out, but um, I I feel her a little bit more aggressive. So definitely, if she that engagement is good, you know. Okay, maybe I'll get punched a couple times, but I think we'll be able to get the to get the fight to the ground. And um, I definitely see a submission coming in this fight. You know, I, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I think sometimes <laughs> when um jujitsu special specialists excuse me make that transition to mma people always assume oh you're gonna get taken down you're gonna get tapped out and a lot of times the question is oh well how is the striking going to evolve but you sort of see the difference between the jujitsu fighters who make a great splash in mma and those who don't or the ones who can really shore up that wrestling game for you long term what's more integral to you making a world championship run becoming a great striker or becoming a great wrestler? Uh, I think for me, it's becoming a great striker. Okay, <laughs> I, definitely, yeah, I like yeah. that. I feel, I feel like my hands is really what, um, is what's helping me set up, you know, the takedown or what's helping me get, get to the person, you know, because I mean, even with t I pulled guard, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, worst case scenario, you know, if I can get my hands on them, you know, and just be confident that, um, you know, whatever I do, I go to like, I don't know. I go for the kill, you know, I guess <laughs> um, that, you know, okay, I can get this win, you know? So I definitely think that my hands and my striking is what's going to make the difference in me being like, you know, when I become the champion and just staying there and keep evolving and being a, you know, what, hopefully one of the goats of the division. So, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it's so different than when Ronda Rousey, for example, was in, and I feel people didn't really respect like her judo background, you know, and, I mean, I think people are like, oh, but she's going to do like head throw, you know, do a head throw and and throw me. You know what I mean? And people didn't didn't like just didn't respect her until she just was submitting yeah, everyone. Yeah. Everybody. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. And she, they would like go at her. And I feel like I mean, the UFC one is hoist crazy, you know, so jujitsu has always been a respected like martial arts. Everyone knows jujitsu since the beginning of UFC, you know, so I think even when I made my transition to MMA, I had never even like done a fight. But jiu-jitsu world champion, you know, multiple-time world jiu-jitsu champion. And so I take, like, one step forward, and people just take, like, ten steps back, you know. So I never really had that, you know, I'm just chasing, chasing, chasing all the time, you know. So really, even if my takedowns were on point, you know, I just, you know, I need something. I need something to, you know, distract them. I need something to get them, you know, to, to bring them in in the fight, to get that engagement, to get them thinking. And I think that's what the, the, the striking is doing. And it's going to do. Oh, yes. Well, and with uh, Perillo in your corner, Marlon Chito Vera in the room, mm -hmm. I can't imagine that we're too far along from seeing that improvement to a championship level. Um, the Tisha Torres fight, very close. Split decision went your way. Uh, I looked online for the media scorecards and stuff. Um, it, you know, everyone had a different opinion, but I think consensusly we can all agree it was a very competitive fight. Um, what was your main takeaway from the Tisha fight? My main take, I mean, I think my main thing was just uh, just to see, like, I can't I can't lose positions. You know, I need to like when I when I go to submit, like I said before, you know, when I go to submit, I can't think like, OK, these girls are going to tap, you know, <laughs> like giving them. Yeah, I mean, 
you don't want to be mean. You don't want to see like people get hurt, you know, but at the same time, it's like, I think if she could, you know, cut me open or whatever, you know, she will, you know? So I mean, I think you're at a point, you're like thinking, okay, technique, technique, you know? And if I just like rip it off, maybe she'll have to like, you know, you don't give them a chance to, to tap. You just, you know, pull the shoulder and maybe they're gonna have to do a surgery or something like that. But at the end of the day, we signed up for this, you yeah. know, and okay. then if I, if I give her time to think, you know, okay, I'll get her on the next one. So I transition to to a footlock. Okay, I'll try, I'll get her on the next one. And you know, it's like, okay, no, you just gotta do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just wow. be mean. Yeah. Well, you know, it's called the gentle art. It doesn't always play out that way. Has that been? So has that been something you've had to sort of start reworking in your head? Is like, if I get it, go for the kill. Don't play too yeah. gently with these guys. Yeah, for sure. Because I mean, it's hard. You know, it's hard. You don't want to do that in training, so you don't really train mm -hmm, that. Sure. You know what I mean? And I mean, just my whole life competing, you know, I mean, what's the most that can happen? They tap, you know, or you tap or they go to sleep, you know, but it's like, you know, the top girls, not all of them will tap, you know, and I mean, it's kind of like you're giving them a chance to to give up, you know, and if they don't, maybe they'll resist it, you know, so um, yeah, just getting that meanness on the moment of the like, like go time, you know what I mean? And not not feel bad, I guess. Okay. You see, this, this is why I really like this is I think our second interview together and it's like, some people, it's like prying new information out of them. I feel like there's all, you're a very thoughtful person. There's always something interesting that comes out of these. <laughs> um, I want to preface this next question by saying I hate how much weight cutting comes up with Mackenzie Dern and most women. I, I want to preface <laughs> this by saying Mackenzie, because I'll put out Q&As and it'll always come up. Mackenzie <laughs> Dern, guys, has not missed weight in seven fights. Four years. We are past it. Yeah. The reason I bring it up is because you said something really interesting in our last interview, and that was that, um, you know, you had some like baggage from the weight misses and what people were saying about it, and that you actually going into the fight before T show, you were actually coming in underweight in your opinion. Yeah. So I was wondering, how has that process been for you now between the T show fight and preparing for this one? Do you feel like you're starting to kind of hit your groove where you don't have to worry about it too much, even when jokers like me bring it up? <laughs> No, I mean, definitely. I mean, I'm so comfortable right now that it's just my goal is just I'm, I'm like right now I'm really just working on getting, you know, um, muscle mass, you know. Mm -hmm. So I've been with my strength training coach for Jerry Camus for two years now. So it's just it's a long process, you know, just putting on muscle, putting on muscle. Um, but I definitely feel I'm getting there. You know, I want to eventually be like in a spot where maybe I can feel comfortable at 125 if I wanted to, you know. So it's just like thinking ahead you know okay five years from now something like that but yeah i mean i'm a i'm at a really good moment in my career my with in you know about the weight just gaining muscle getting each time you know he's giving me a good base of you know my my lower back you know glutes and legs and just um having that muscle you know so it's really really good obviously more muscle the metabolism goes you know it's it's up more on point you know so you can you can have those cheap days and it doesn't like, you know, <laughs> stay on you, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, I'm definitely really good where I am. I'm definitely gonna come in this fight um, stronger. I think stronger than even when my last fight with Tisha, definitely stronger with my fight, Marina. Um, but hey, I mean, I just, after seeing like Chimaev, you know, not make weight more than mine, I was kind of like, okay, that beat my record. That so, was bad, that was I'm, bad. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm hoping that people will talk about that and just forget about mine. Okay. Uh, I will make a commitment to you. Next time we interview, no wait questions, okay? Uh, so we moved on. Um, we'll only talk about Shemaev. Uh, um, all right, as we wrap up, I do want to know, I mentioned Marlon Chitovera. I know you've gotten some rounds with him. Um, man, I love that guy. Like, he comes off very violent both inside the cage and sort of like in the media when he's talking about his opponents um you know him and i talked at length about like his uh upbringing and like all the anger he had and stuff like that but seeing kind of the photos of you two seem kind of joke around i couldn't help but wonder what's marlon chito vera like when you actually get to know him and spend some quality time with him oh he's he's not like you know <laughs> he's totally not like mean you know he's such a He's funny, you know, always joking, messing around, you know. He's like he's like a big kid who just like loves to kick ass, you know. So it's like, yeah, Coach always says like he calls us the rascals, you know, because we just like mess around, you know. But I mean, of course, when he's focused, he's focused, you know. But he's definitely like a big brother to me, you know. So well, I mean, big brother, 
I guess I'm gonna say big brother because we're at the same age, you know. But you know, I mean, he's a dad, a husband, um, so he he definitely likes to have fun, you know, and that's that's cool, you know, because we're both kind of we both like fully committed to training with Carrillo at the same time, you know. So we're both like two years 100% with Perillo and we just evolved so much. So it's really cool like that we push each other. We always have like that competitive, competitive, competitiveness with each other. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a cool guy. You know, he, def he definitely doesn't, he's not angry like this all the time. <laughs> I'm happy to hear it. Yeah, it was very nice talking to him. He's your uh, big brother up a couple weight classes, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Last thing before we finish up on some rapid fire, get to know you a little bit better. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. I was going through your jujitsu, your grappling record, and I saw five matches with Gabby Garcia. Um, it was for your fifth professional fight and then all the way to your 43rd professional fight. It was four losses, and then finally you got that win in your most recent outing. How validating was it? And, I mean, let's be honest. Gabby is a freak of nature <laughs> and an amazing grappler on top of that to go on with, like, the natural gifts. Uh, how validating was it for you to finally get that win when you had sort of crossed paths so many times from the beginning of your career? Um, I mean, it was good. I think I think the the jiu jitsu community was a little bit like more surprised, you know, and they were kind of like I think everyone was shocked, you know. And I always knew that you know someone was gonna be here. I never I was like, okay, it'll be me. But I think just you know, out of all the girls in the because you know we have the absolute division, so like let's say a tournament all the girls are in the warm-up area, you know, and you'd see, like, okay, the bracket, and then you could just see, like, whoever fell on her side of the bracket was like, oh, I'm not even going to fight, you know, and just like, oh, I'll just give up, you know, and I'm like, man, like, you guys are killing me, you know, because, like, by the time, and then everyone on our side, like, if we were on the other side of the bracket. Eating hard, yeah. Yeah, everyone's, like, competing, because they just want to get to second place, you know, so for them, they just want, I'm like, and then she's basically, like, going fresh all the way to the finals, because everyone's just kind of, like, wow, giving up. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, so it's people kind of were like actually little... pulling out. Just they saw her yeah. name, like never mind. Yeah, yeah, because in Jiu Jitsu, the absolute division is before your weight class, mm -hmm. you know. So mm. the weight class is always, of course, like um, the priority, you know, when your weight division. And so when they saw, like, oh, they didn't want to risk getting hurt or something like that, you know what I mean? So, um, or even if they did do the fight, but you know, they would try. But if she got kind of like a good position, already kind of like give up, you know. So I'm like, man, and that's like. That's the only time we can learn, you know. There's no one that's like Gabby Garcia, you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't find it. I didn't have a training partner that was like her. The only time I could train for her is when I would fight her. That was my time to learn, you know, and see what works, what didn't work. Each time was experience, experiment, you know, and just see, okay, I'm going to try this grip. I'm going to try this strategy. I'm going to try this and that. And also, too, by watching other people hurt, you know. So I'd watch her fight other people and be like, okay, she wasn't able to pass the guard for a couple of minutes. You know, I'm going to try that, you know. Oh, I saw someone else do that. She passed so fast. I'm not going to do that. You know what I mean? So that that's the only time we could really train for her, you know? Um, so, I mean, I knew one day it's like, it's the same with MMA, you know, the champ, it's always hard to be the champ because everyone's studying, you You know what I mean? Everyone's training for you. Um, you're in the eyes of everybody. So it's like, eventually it was going to come, you know, but I definitely think that, you know, at her prime, you know, when I was able to get the win, um, you know, it, I think it was a big change in the whole jiu-jitsu community and people got like what happened. And I, I happened to be at that one tournament. I was at my lightest weight. I fought like 55 uh, kilos. So I was like 118 um, or one. Yeah, like 120. Um, so, yeah, I was like the smallest division and we were able to get the win. So, yeah, it was it was really good. You know, I was happy. You know, I felt like, OK, I knew it was going to happen someone. But the fact that it ended up being me, you know, I knew that like, OK, when you believe it, you know, you, you you'll get it. You know, so it's just believing in and i take that for my life you know and everything i do conceive believe achieve as fellow uh Perlo yeah student michael bisping would say uh, um mackenzie this has been wonderful i want to end on some rapid fire if you have time and we can keep these pretty short okay okay all right uh i i love quintet grappling i don't know where it is i need it back in 2022 uh if you could draft four martial artists to be on your dream quintet grappling unit who would it be um Let's see, like Habib, Daniel Maya, um, Kita Gracie, and um, does it have to be an MMA? Nope, anything you want. Okay, and uh, I'll do Harjo Gracie too. The wet blanket, the team. 
Yeah. Habib, man, I, I, what I wouldn't what I wouldn't do to see Habib in some grappling matches. Um, <laughs> who would make it further if they swapped careers? Would you make a better pro surfer, or would your husband Wesley Santos succeed more as a fighter? Oh dang, that's hard. Um, I think. Let me see. No, I think I'd make a better surfer. Okay. <laughs> Love or not a fighter on his end. That's okay. Um, you mentioned it at the top when we were talking about Gordon Ryan. Which MMA fighter parties the hardiest? Parties the hardest, excuse me. MMA fighter? Or, you, know, um, you can out whoever you want. I don't, no rules here. Um, let me see. Um, I mean, I got to say, like, Man, almost all the all the parties I've been to, I've seen Nate Diaz. So I want to probably say Nate's Nate's pretty Nate's pretty chill. You know, he's at almost all, all of them. I love that. Shout out to Nate, man. Uh, I'm so excited to see what he gets to do now, cashing on a few big paydays. Yes. Uh, last one. Maybe Mackenzie's had one too many to drink. <laughs> Sees the karaoke machine. Who are you doing a duet with, and what's the song? Who are you doing a duet with? Um. Let's see. Man, I don't know. That's a hard one. Um, <laughs> I mean, probably not. Let, let, okay, going back on the drink, you know, let's say like I'm not at a club. I'm at home, but I found the karaoke. I'm going to stay with my daughter and we'll uh, probably do like a meatloaf. You know, I don't know if you know meatloaf. He was like yeah. from the 90s and it's like a song. I would do anything for love. She loves that song. We put that on the music, the radio, Ooh. and she's like singing, you know, and we'll sing it together like from the top of our lungs. Young Mo, a woman of culture. Yeah. Raised all on the music. I love that. Mackenzie, this has been so much fun as it always is. I want to leave you with the last words. So I'll do my part very, very quickly. Guys, thank you so much for checking out the video. If you're still here, you know what you got to do. Subscribe, notification bell, thumbs up. Let us know what would be your all time favorite submission to see Mackenzie during Hit Inside the Octagon. Full feature on the CBS Sports website in the description of this video. Mackenzie, you fight Yan Zhaonan in the main event of UFC Vegas 61 on Saturday, October 1st. If there's anything you want to let the people know, please let them know. No, well, just for everyone to tune in, October 1st. Um, October 2nd is my dad's birthday, so hopefully we can okay. do a big celebration for that. And just thanks to all the fans. And don't miss it. It's going to be a great fight.